What's up everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna practice factoring quadratics where a equals one, so where our leading coefficient, right? The coefficient of the x squared term is one. And you may say, well, what about these two examples down here? Well, it turns out that we can do something with each of these examples where we end up with a quadratic where a does equal one. And then from there, it's just the same as we did with these previous examples. So we're gonna practice these six examples. First, I'm gonna give a little insight, a little explanation and understanding how this factoring process works. Pause the video now, try some of these on your own. Skip around, it'll be all time stamped up. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's go ahead and start. So in this video, again, we focus on quadratics of this form where a equals one. So when these things are factorable, right, because sometimes they're not, but when they are, they can be written as the product of two binomials. So here's an example. We have a quadratic. We can write it as the product of two binomials, right? These are each binomials, and they're a product because they're being multiplied together. And broadly, that's the goal of factoring, is to take something and write it as a product of factors which are often smaller and simpler okay so this process of factoring is going from this right these quadratics to here this is what we want to figure out how to do how do we go from the left to the right how do we know to put a two here and a three here and all that stuff right and to understand this we can think about well we know how to go from right to left you maybe have heard the acronym foil right first outer inner last so hopefully you can apply the distributive property and go from right to left. And if you're able to do that, then you can probably gain some insight into how to undo that. Because that's really one way to think about factoring, especially with these quadratics, is really reverse foiling, reversing that process. So let's see if we can understand that process, right? First gives us x times x, that's x squared. Then we have outer, that's 3x. Then we have inner, that's 2 times x, which is 2x. And then last, finally, we end up with plus 6. And we always end up combining like terms. We always end up with 2x terms, and we can combine them. And so one thing we've just done is confirm that this equal sign is, in fact, correct. These two things are equal, right? And this is what should always happen. If you factor and then you multiply back out, you should always get back to where you started. So that's good. That's good that my my notes are correct. But let's see if we can understand what's going on here, because how are we supposed to go from something like this to writing two parentheses and figuring out what goes in those parentheses? So one thing we can notice is that the x squared term, right, is always the result of the product of the two x terms. That's the only way to get an x squared term is to multiply x times x. So since we're dealing with examples where a equals one, there's a little coefficient of one here, our only possibility is that there's an x here and there's an x here. So we can automatically, whenever we see examples like this and we're trying to factor them, just put an x there and an x there in our two parentheses. Now we just have to figure out what goes here, right? What am I adding or subtracting in each of these binomials. So let's see if we can notice another relationship here, which is the fact that, look at this 6. Where does this 6 come from? That's always the product of the two constant terms, right, in the binomials. There's no other way to get a constant term in our final quadratic other than to multiply two constants. So whatever these numbers are, we know that they multiply together to be 6, right? So there's some options. There's 1 and 6, there's three and two. If we consider the negatives as well, technically negative one and negative six multiply together to be six, as well as negative three and negative two. All right, so we've narrowed it down to four possibilities, but can we do better than that? And yes, we can by noticing one final relationship, which is, look at this, the plus three x plus two x equals plus five x. Where do these numbers come from? Well, remember, we multiply three times x, two times x, and then we add those together to get five. What again are the three and the two? Well, those are the factors of six. Those are the numbers that multiply together to be six. But they also need to add together to be this B term. That's always what's gonna happen. When we take something like this, foil it out, the B term is gonna be these two constant terms added together, right? The coefficient, that B, is gonna be those constant terms added together. So we want to find two numbers that multiply together to be six, but also that add together to be five which is these right here, three and two. And hopefully this makes a little bit sense about why, because I know students often memorize this, multiply together to be six, add together to be five, right? I know students memorize this kind of thing, but I want you to also understand and see why this works and where this comes from, right? And hopefully this helped a little bit with that. So in general, again, we're thinking about 
looking for two numbers that multiply together to be C and add together to be B. And those are the numbers that we're picking to go inside our binomial. Let's try another example. Hopefully that made sense. So x squared plus 6x plus 8. Again, because these are examples where a equals 1, we can start right off the bat by writing an x in each of our parentheses. We know that we're going to have x and x because that's the only way to get x squared is x times x, right? So now we just have to figure out what goes here, right? What are we adding or subtracting? And again, we're looking for numbers that multiply together to be 8 and add together to be 6. And I like to consider the sign as well, right? Because really we want them to multiply together to be positive 8 and also add together to be positive 6. Okay, so we can list out factors of 8. We have 1 and 8. We have, what, 2 and 4. And then we can, of course, take the negatives. Negative 1, negative 8, negative 2, negative 4. But let's think about why the negatives wouldn't make any sense. Because remember, we want numbers that add together to be positive 6, right? And anytime we add two negative numbers together, we're going to end up with a negative number. So we can automatically cross those out. And once you get really good at this, you won't even write them down. You won't even consider them because you'll know, no, that can't be it. They both have to be positive, right? So let's see, 1 and 8, that gives us 9. 2 and 4, that gives us 6. So 2 and 4 are going to work here. That's going to work. And again, since we have x and x, the order doesn't matter. x plus 2 times x plus 4, x plus 4 times x plus 2, both are the same thing. And this is the factored form. How could we convince ourselves? How could we check our answer? Well, we could FOIL this out, right? x squared plus 4x plus 2x plus 2 times 4, that's 8. And then we combine our like terms, we get exactly back to where we started. And so this is one way we can check our answer if we want to. All right, let's try another one. Same idea. We're going to start with two sets of parentheses, x in one, x in the other. Again, when a equals 1, we already know we have x plus or minus something and times x plus or minus something. So 28. Now this has a lot of factors. We want two numbers that multiply together to be 28, but add together to be negative 11. Again, I always like to consider the sign because we want these numbers to add together to be a negative number, but multiply together to be a positive number. So how can you multiply two numbers together to be positive? Well, they either both have to be positive or both have to be negative, right? But if they're both positive, then they will add together to be a positive number. And we don't want that. We want them to add together to be a negative number, in particular, negative 11. So hopefully you can see why I can jump straight into considering only negative pairs, right? These combinations these negative pairs, let's see, what else do we have? Negative 7, negative 4. Uh, I think that's the one that's going to work. But hopefully that makes sense. You could write out the positive ones if you want to. But again, I really like looking at the signs involved here. Since this is positive, we know that either both numbers are positive or both are negative. But since this is negative, we know that both have to be negative because we definitely can't add two positive numbers together and get a negative. So they both have to be negative. And in fact, they are negative 7 and negative 4. So minus 4, minus 7, and we could check our answer, but this does in fact work. Now let's try another. Let's mix it up. Mix it up a little bit. Last time, what did we have? We had minus plus. This time we have plus minus. So the B term in this case is positive, and this term is negative. So what does it mean to look for numbers that multiply together to be negative 12? Well, that means that one of them has to be positive and one has to be negative. So we could have like 1 and negative 12 or we could have negative 1 and 12, right? What else could we have? We could have 2 and negative 6. We could have negative 2 and 6. How many more are there? Is it just 3 and 4 left? 3 and negative 4, or negative 3 and 4? I believe that is it. So what do we have? Six different combos here. Okay, well, what else has to be true? Remember, they multiply together to be negative 12, but they add together to be positive 4x. No, positive 4. Sorry, positive 4. They add together to be positive 4. How can we add a positive and a negative and get a positive? Well, the positive definitely has to be bigger than a negative, right? So that's one way to think about this. Another way is we can just go through and add these, right? This is negative 11. That's not going to work. This is 11. That's not going to work. 
this is negative 4 that's not going to work this gives us 4 that does work and we can eliminate the others as well this gives us negative 1 this gives us positive 1 so that's one way to do it but hopefully that makes sense that whenever this b is positive right and this c is negative that the positive factor has to be bigger than the negative factor okay so let's write out what we have which is x minus 2 times x plus 6 and we can check our answer by foiling this out and getting right back to where we started awesome let's try the next one here x squared minus x minus 20 now we have a negative as both b and c so let's think about this okay numbers that multiply together to be negative 20 but again we want them to this time add together to be a negative in particular negative 1 so what could we have here? Well, one has to be positive, one has to be negative, right? Because they have to multiply together to be a negative. We can automatically eliminate these, right? Negative 19 and positive 19. That's not going to work, okay? What else could we do? Let's see, 2 and 10. I don't think those are going to work either because that's going to give us, what, negative 8 and positive 8? And notice that that's kind of the relationship here is that 2 and 10 together either give us negative 8 or positive 8. 1 and 20 together either give us positive 19 or negative 19, right? So it's sort of this plus or minus thing that we can think about. So how can we get 1 or negative 1? Well, I think that's going to be 4 and 5. But again, we want to figure out how to make them add together to be negative 1. So that means that the negative has to be bigger. The negative has to be 5. So 4 and negative 5, those multiply together to be negative 20. They add together to be negative 1. And so that's how we can write our factor here is x plus 4, x minus 5. So hopefully that makes sense. Not everyone, I understand not everyone writes out the positive and the negative and all those pairs. Some people just list the numbers. But I think it's really important to think about these relationships of like, you know, what do we know when a number is positive, when it's negative, what can we eliminate automatically and not even consider, right? So really go through some examples and think about that. All right, now we got our example where a is not equal to 1, but one thing we can do is we can factor out a 2. So this is a good general practice for when you're factoring, is always look for a common factor first. Look to see if you can take a common factor, and really you're looking to take the greatest common factor out from the entire thing. And that's the first thing you should always try to do, because it'll make your life a little easier, right? Because you could jump straight into this doing like trial and error, or like the AC method, or instead you could do this, and now we have, right, a quadratic where A equals one. So now what we're gonna end up with is two times X something and X something. We're doing the same thing here, right? We're looking at negative 15. We want two numbers that multiply together to be negative 15, but add together to be negative two. And we can go through stuff. Well, 15 and 1 is going to give us, you know, let's see, 1 has to be positive, 1 has to be negative, so it's going to be 14 and negative 14. That's not going to work. And we can go through, what about 5 and 3? That might be the only other one, actually. 15 and 1, 5 and 3, those are the only pairs. So 1's positive, 1's negative, but we want negative 2 to be their sum. So we need the negative to go to the bigger number because we want the sum to be negative. So when we add these together, we get negative 2, we're good to go. So here's a minus 5, here's plus 3, and this is the fully factored form. So if you fold this out and then distributed the 2, we get right back to where you started. Awesome. All right, one more example, same idea. We could factor out a 2, but we could also factor out a 4. That's the greatest common factor between all these terms. So we end up with x squared plus 4x minus 5. And these examples are actually kind of easy because this is prime, right? So we have 5 and 1 are the only possibilities. And since it's negative, it's minus 5 plus 1 or plus 5 minus 1, right? So there's literally, of all the options, only 2. So which one of those is it? Well, let's first write this out. We know x goes there, x goes there. Okay, they multiply together to be negative 5, add together to be positive 4, so we want the positive number to be bigger than the negative. 5 minus 1 is positive 4, so we're good to go. Plus 5, that's the positive. Minus 1, that's the negative. And that should be our last example. 
Okay, so hopefully this video was helpful. Again, this is really important once you get into solving quadratic equations. I mean, you're going to use this all throughout calculus, even classes like differential equations and that kind of stuff. It's really important to be able to factor quadratics, polynomials. So hopefully this helped. If you have any questions, leave them below. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. But most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles, and I'll see you all later.